That's the one. Yeah. Kia ora team, and welcome back to Big Boys Boxing. Hope everybody is staying safe, doing well, and keeping away from the Rona. So, we have this fight between Tony Yoka, 10 0. We'll be taking on Piram Milas, 15 0. Two unbeaten prospects getting it on it's going to be happening september 10th at the roland garros tennis center in paris so while i yarn about this fight i'm going to run a simulation as you can see on screen there yoka versus milas i've just built the milas to what i think he is i downloaded a tony yoka and made some changes so uh where should we fight? MGM Grand Las Vegas. That'll do. Says I don't think they have anything for Paris here. Thomas and Max in and uh, nah. I oh, would we'll fight in the Metro Manila Arena in the Philippines. We'll see how the fight goes. So hopefully the volume's not too loud. You'll still be able to hear me yarning about this fight. And once I've gotten through it, I might open up the lines and see if anybody wants to join a little bit later on. Stephen Athena, uh, Stephen 4722 in the house. Good to have you in, brother. Um, so, yeah, this fight. Some of y'all may not know too much about Peter Milas. Croatian heavyweight. He's been around for quite some time. He had been trying to get, uh, get a fight with... Um, Philip Hergovic a couple of years ago, but Philip Hergovic says uh, he's got to do much more before he gets to fight me, like he's some kind of uh, big money fighter. But at this stage, Philip Hergovic hasn't managed to get the fights to require that. Anyway, um, Pitar Milas is 15 and 0. He has a couple of names on his record that you may recognize, right? He's six foot four and a half, so we'll just call him six foot five. He's born in Split, Croatia, lives in Split, Croatia. And he has not fought since uh, the 26th of September last year. Uh, sorry, 2019. So it's going to be just over two years since he fought last um his last fight was against johnny muller who was 21 and 8 nothing to write home about um the fight before that was dennis backed off uh very much journeyman level fighter he was 39 and 14. um he also fought nico tintor before that another journeyman well kind of uh he's fought, he was 14 and 1 at the time but uh, then we start getting into the names that you may recognize. He beat Francesco Pianetta at the time was 35 and 3. And he beat him by a unanimous decision over 10 rounds. And the fight before that, many people think this is the one that defines Peter Milos as a real puncher because he stopped kevin johnson you look at box rec it says tko victory in the eighth round of 10 All right now that fight was stopped on cuts kevin johnson got cut after the fourth round so um it was not going to be going to the cards by accidental headbutt before four rounds or anything like that. He was cut after four rounds and it was caused by a punch. So, the ref and the doctor had stopped the fight in round 10, giving Peter Milas that 10th round TKO victory over Kevin Johnson. I believe there's only two people on the planet who have stopped Kevin Johnson, being Anthony Joshua and uh, Peter Milas. Anthony Joshua's stoppage even, I thought the ref jumped in too early to be honest in that one as well, but it is what it is, you know, 
on paper. It looks pretty. It looks pretty. Um, prior to Kevin Johnson, Peter Milos. Uh, just having a quick squiz, squiz through to make sure. Yeah, he's he fought nobody before he fought Kevin Johnson. Okay, absolute nobodies. And there's guys here with winning records. There's one here with who was three and zero. There's one here was six and zero. But they didn't ever fought anybody anywhere either. There's a few guys on here that were on debut as well. So we don't know really where Peter Milas is. Uh, with regard to where he sh where we should rank him in the heavyweight division, yeah, he's unbeaten. He has um, eleven KOs out of his fifteen wins, but this fight against Tony Yoka is going to give us some information of really where he should be thought of rank wise in the heavyweight division. So move on to Tony Yoka. We all know about Tony Yoka, right? It was the 2016 gold medalist from Rio. Um, he's six foot seven, with a registered reach of 82 inches. Uh, we didn't have a reach on Peter Milas, but I'm guessing it's around 78, maybe 79 inches somewhere there. Would be about right for a six foot four, six foot five fighter, but looking at him he doesn't look like he has hugely long arms so I'd, I'd be leaning towards the 78 79 inch right um the dude can box a bit so yeah but anyway we're talking about tony yoka here he's 10 and 0 he has eight ko's now this guy has what i think is the best heavyweight record for the first 10 fights of anybody um that I've seen in the heavyweight division of, of late, right? He started against Travis Clark, which was pretty much a nobody. But Travis Clark at the time was 12-0. Then he took on Jonathan Rice, a very tricky uh, journeyman kind of level fighter, but lots of people stay away from him because he's quite skilled, quite elusive. He almost um, upset Dempsey McKean. And he gave... Tony Yoka some trouble in that fight as well. That fight went the distance. It was only a six rounder, but um, <clears throat> Tony Yoka got the nod in that fight. Uh, the next fight was pretty much a nobody. I remember this one. Ali, because I can't remember the name. Ali Bakotes. Yeah, yeah Bagotes, I'll say. I don't know. Um, then he fought Cyril Leonette who was, at the time, I think he was the French champion, he was 13-9. and nine. But he's nothing to write home about either. But then he moves into some names that we recognise. Dave Allen. Alexander Dimitrenko. Michelle Wallace. Johan Duopa. Christian Hammer. Who was this dude he fought? Ah, oh, yeah, I remember seeing highlights of it. Joel, uh, Joel Tumbleway Jekko. I remember, yeah, that's right. We shouldn't really have been in the ring with um, Yoko, that guy, Joel Tumbleway Jekko. Um, he, he did give a spirited effort, didn't say that much, but he got stopped in the 12th round. He went that long. So well done to uh, Joel Tumbleway Jekko for getting that far. And that was the last fight. But, you know, five of those names in there are ranked fighters for a guy who's fighting in his first 10 fights. Christian Hammer, Johan Dorper, Michio Wallace, Alexander Dimitrenko, and Dave Allen. And you can throw Jonathan Rice in that lot as well. There's nobody else who's fought that quality of competition. At heavyweight in their first 10 fights no freaking way now tony yoka is one of this handful of prospects um, that i think is high possibility of obtaining a world title at some stage i mean we have the likes of uh tony yoka philip hergovic um what's his name 
Esling Bick, Mac Madov, um, Fabio Wardley's, uh, the uh, Jared Anderson, the Michael Plight Coffees. Nice. These guys uh, really have a good shot at becoming world champions and being the top of the division in the next 10 years put together. I think we're going to hear a lot more of all those names, and I think Tony Yoker is one of them. And Tony Yoker is one of the older kind of guys of that group. Uh, I believe he's 30 years old. Uh, just let me have a quick look at here somewhere. Where's this bloody age? He's 29. Doesn't have his birthday on here, so maybe 30 by the time the fight starts fight happens i'm not sure but this fight itself i am picking tony yoka with confidence in this fight um not because i think he's some kind of you know massive puncher and or anything like that i just think he's got more skills um i've seen peter milas fight and if any of y'all haven't simply go to youtube and search um, Pitar Milas, you got to spell it right or it won't come up. P E T A R Milas, M I L A S. Peter Milas, I typed in Peter Milas highlights and it came up with the Francesco Pianeta fight. That's a full fight and that gives you a decent idea of um, how well he can box. So, um, and there's other fights on there as well. I think there was. Kevin Johnson one wasn't available. Um, oh, it was Dennis Bakhtov was the other other one that was worth looking at. The sounds disappeared. Hope my mic's still working. Um, yeah, I can't hear any game volume anymore. Hopefully, you guys have still got it. But uh, that fight is running in the background anyway. Um, oh, did the stream stuff out? Let me look. Oh, it did. Streaming from Xbox One. <coughs> ah, I just gotta move the controller. Oh, bloody thing's going to sleep, that's all. All good. That should be back up and running for y'all. Um, but yeah, if, I think Tony Yoka. I, I'm tossing up at this point whether to say stoppage or or a points decision. But at this point, it's not on Boxrec, so I don't know how long the fight is. I'm assuming it's going to be at least a ten rounder. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of. EBU Eliminator or something for this fight. They're both European fighters. Joe Joyce is the European champion at this point, and that's a fight I wouldn't mind seeing down the track. Is the the Olympic final rematch between Joe Joyce and Tony Yoka? Um, yeah, definitely be worth looking at down the track. But at the moment, we've got this fight. Now I wouldn't exactly be surprised if Peter Milas actually lands something and picks up an upset by stoppage in this fight. I think Tony Yoka's chin can be questionable at times. Uh, Peter Milas can punch, so it could happen, but I, I seriously can't see Peter Milas uh, winning that fight on points. Like, the possibility of it, I'd put it less than 10 percent to be honest so it is what it is um but i'm looking forward to a matchup from some unbeaten fighters these up and coming guys who are unbeaten it's good to see a couple of them fighting each other um so yeah i'm looking forward to it right so i'm gonna drop a link in the chat for anybody who may like to join Give me a sec here. You can have a bit of a yarn about this fight or whatever else is going on in boxing at the moment. So there's a link to join. The Boxing Lounge drops the dollar, $10 holla. You the man, Tommy. 
Appreciate that, brother. Loving the FNC on screen. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, just running a simulation. I'm not controlling any of those, but made the fighters and let them go for it and see what happens. Um, I created them pretty close to what I think they they actually are. Yoka should win, I think. Um, but we'll see. The stronger fighter usually comes on in the second half. Um, but yeah, I've dropped a link in the chat there. It's pinned to the top if anybody wants to come and have a yarn about anything boxing. So over the weekend, there was only two fights that I watched. There was uh, Michael Riviera versus, was it Joel Fernandez? Um, interesting little fight, that one. Uh, Riviera has some skills. Uh, he's trying to imitate Muhammad Ali for some reason, but he doesn't look as good when he's on the back foot. He took a few heavy shots from Fernandez. Fernandez is a, uh, sorry, Fernandez is a decent puncher, and he caught Riviera with a few shots. He did put Riviera down, I think it was in the sixth round, and uh, Riviera managed to get up no problem. But, uh, in the very next round, oh no, it wasn't the next round, it was a round after that. Um, Riviera landed a threw the jab and then followed it up with the right hand and landed a very good punch and put uh, put Fernandez out. He wasn't out cold, but he did try and get up and he just couldn't get up. And that was the end of the fight. We also had Chris Colbert versus uh, Tug Stutt Nayambaya. Oh, King Tug. Um, decent little fight, but I think uh, everyone was pretty much... Well, everyone knew that Chris Colbert was going to win that fight. It was going to be a question of whether he can get a knockout, which he hasn't got many of. I think he's 15 and 0, or 16 and 0 with six knockouts or something. Um, at no point did I think he was going to get Tug out of there. Tug is a tough bastard. He might not be the best boxer, but he is a tough bastard. Got to give him that. And he did try. But uh, Chris Colbert, just too fast, too many skills, and he got the decision win. Um, I made a little bit of money on those two fights. Nothing drastic. It's not heavyweight. I don't know too much about it. So I had a couple of couple of multis, one three-league multi that come off. I think there was a fight uh, the day before. There was. Well, I can't even remember who it was. I chucked that in my multi, got the first two, and then... Um, Colbert by decision for the last one and a second multi I put uh, um, Riviera by stoppage from rounds 7 to 12 that bumped my odds up and then Chuck Colbert by decision on top of that and uh, that came off as well I actually put 5 bets on but the others were just like little $2 cover bets just in case I still turned 20 bucks into 50 bucks so Meh, can't complain at a profit even if it is a little one. Great <clears throat> idea to create the boxes and run some fights before the scrap. Yeah, man. Any fight that I'm really quite interested in, I do um, make some fighters and run a simulation. I usually record a simulation just to see how it comes out because you never know what's going to happen in the fight and um, I've got a few fights put aside to um, use as as background stuff like uh, Fury Wilder 3 you know, I've got some backups for that I've got Joshua Usyk ready to go so when I'm going to start talking about those fights I can put them in the background as well hopefully that game volume isn't too loud for y'all uh, I might have to put some filters on it to dim it out so you can still see the chat over top of it but it's all good we'll, we'll get there all works in progress man but um yeah we've got uh joyce and tackham coming up on the same day as fury wilder 3 with kalnaki and hellenius having their rematch on that same card and then also got uh a versus um 
Frank Sanchez on that card. It's going to be a big day, man. July 24th, I think it is, just off the top of my head. It's either July 24th or 27th. But, um, no, it's, it's going to be a few decent fights coming up. We've been waiting a while. It's been a bit boring the last little while for heavyweight fans. In fact, the last couple of weeks have been pretty dry for any decent fights. Um, so, you know, a lot of us talking about what guys have said because there ain't much boxing to talk about. <laughs> you know, I see a lot of guys on the Chris Colbert on the um, the boxing voice calling it, calling uh, Deontay Wilder acting like a sucker and then that video got taken down and this big drama's like, man, that's some boring shit. That ain't boxing. That's, <laughs> you know, that's like what women argue about. What do you want to talk about that crap for? Who cares? Until they get in the ring, none of that shit matters. <laughs> I'm more interested in uh, some competitive fights getting made. Now we're getting the vaccination, um, getting out around the world, and a lot of places are opening up to crowds, some only opening up to those who are vaccinated. Fair enough and blah, 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 but, uh, you know, boxing's been suffering for a while this year. Um because of COVID, I'm looking forward to coming right back, and uh, we're starting to get a few of these actual competitive fights announced, um, yeah, that is what it is, man, so, um, yeah, looking forward to some of these competitive fights coming out, I'd like to see more of these unbeaten prospects like, like Yoka and, uh, Milas getting it on, um, I was kind of thinking that Milas might end up fighting Alan Bavik. But I uh, see Alan Bavik wants to fight uh, Philip Hergovic. But H Philip Hergovic's still using that. Uh, you ain't done enough to be able to fight me. Um, same as, you know, same thing with Milas and uh, Bavik. Hergovic's saying the same thing. He just doesn't want to fight his countrymen. He wants to go and fight someone who's worth a bit of money. Babbitt wants to fight Hergovic. Milas wants to fight Hergovic. So why not once Milas loses to Joker, Babbitt and Milas should get it on in Croatia. That'll be a huge event there. Um, I'd love to see it. But I'm pretty damn sure Milas is going to lose this fight. Derek Shizora versus Chris Ariola. Great fight next. Is that happening, is it? That's the first I've heard of that, man. That's a decent fight. Both two uh, really good chinned guys. They both like to throw lots of punches. Now that's a good competitive scrap. Both a bit longer in the tooth. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. I'm on Discord. Can you hear me, John? Hold on, mate. Let me get in there and have a look. You're not in the voice chat in the live panel channel, brother. Um, on the left hand side, down, click on the click on the uh, live panel, brother. When you're in Discord, you'll see my avatar there with the green rings around it. You should be able to just click on it and it'll drop you in there. I'll see if I can find you, mate. Where are we? Do, 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 do. Online. Look, it doesn't say you're online here. But, uh, yeah, I can't see you in the, in the voice channel, brother. There you go. Now you're in, bro. You hear me? In a sec. Okay. You, got, you got me, Jono? Yeah, bro, I can hear you loud and clear. Sweet, man. All good. All right, man, so what do you reckon of this fight? Tony Yoka. Yeah. With us. I, I haven't followed um, either of them a great deal. Okay. Um, All right. 
Well, Yoko's Yoko's, Yoko's got that um, resume with a few names you'd know on it for sure. I've what I have watched Tony. Yo I did watch. Um, I'm just checking. I watched one of his fights. Maybe I don't know how many fights he's had since I watched his last one. I'm just. I watched one of them. Hang Christian on. Hammer, you might have watched. Or Johan I think it was. I think it was. I think it was. Yeah. Hang on, Tony. Yoka. Bringing him up, Tony Yoka. Uh, ten and eight. Yeah, he's going along. All right. Yeah, it would have been the Christian Hammer one that I watched. Yep. Yeah. So he said he's had one fight since then, and he got the TKO in the twelfth. Yeah. That Joel Tomboy Jeko fight, I remember watching it. It might be available on YouTube. I haven't looked for it. Um, but that Tomboy Jeko guy came to fight, man. He tried. Got to give him that. But, uh, yeah, he gave Yoko He's a bit of trouble. He's fighting, is it Peter Milas? Yeah, Peter Milas from Croatia. Um, it's not on Boxer it yet, so um, hopefully... Oh, uh, I, just, I just checked that. Yeah, I'm just... Here we are, Peter Milas, fifteen and oh, yeah, six foot four and a half. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah that's that's a, that's an interesting one. Who's he fought? Oh, he's he's fought. He's just coming up, so he hasn't fought a lot of big names. That's an interesting fight, though. It is. Oh, he he fought yeah. um, Francesco Pianetta and beat him over a decision win. And oh, yes, yeah, yep, yep. The, the fight before that, he stopped Kevin Johnson, which is uh, you know not many people do that. But uh, it wasn't yeah, cuts. Not wasn't cut so Tony and he, Tony Yoke is very tall eh? he's, a, he's a very big guy six four and a half six seven yeah Tony Yoka seven yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yoka six or seven or whatever yeah the way he's been oh. fighting recently he hasn't been utilizing his height um but in both the Dorpa and well he couldn't really use his height in the Christian Hammer fight because he was on him like a fly on shit trying to make it as dirty and as awkward as possible but um even in the in the Dorpa fight he wasn't using his jabs he wasn't keeping his distance he was getting in close and throwing hooks overhand rights uppercuts so yeah um, he's six foot seven yeah six foot seven tony yoka yeah so mm -hmm. that's an interesting fight It'll be a yeah, step up fight for him yep yeah at least it's it's two unbeaten prospects getting it on you know you don't see much good, of that eh? at the moment it's yeah, it's good, man. We've got um Fury this month. That'll be good. Yo, that's well, looking forward to it. Yeah, Fury, Fury Water, Ajugba, Sanchez, Kalnaki, uh, Hellenius, Joyce, Takim. They're all on the same day. Right, excellent. <laughs> and, uh, not on the same card though. Um, the only one that's not on that. The only one that's not on that card is Joyce and Takim. I think that's oh, okay. that fight. But uh, all yeah. the rest are on that PBC card. Excellent, man. Um, but, um, Jamel Charlo's fighting this month. Okay, who is he? That, Jamel or Jamal? Mel. <laughs> Mel. Yeah, Jamel 154. -L -L. So he'll be undisputed, I think. Must be, I think it's for undisputed. Or is it just a title defense? I can't remember. No, no. There's... Um... Has he got two or three belts? I can't remember. He's only one. Away, he's only one away from undisputed. He's got three. Yeah. So he wants that last fight. Oh, I can't remember who's got that belt. I don't know who he's scheduled to be fighting either. Let me have a look. Got a heavyweight cruiserweight. Uh, uh. Jamal. Jamal's last fight. He had to work hard. Yeah, I'm not as high on Maul as I am Mel. Mel's better. Oh, I, I, think. I prefer I prefer Mel as well. Yeah, he's a better fighter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's fighting Brian Carlos Castanio. Uh, yep, that's the guy who's got the other belt. So that's yep, so the you know, uh, undisputed yep. fight. Wow, man, we got a eh? nice. We got on him, man. Nice. Yep. He deserves some props for it, Jamel. A lot of he, people hate on the Charlos. They won't give them credit for anything. But I like Jamel. He deserves credit for what he's done. Yep, definitely. Uh, he bounced back from that loss well. Um, you know, and a lot of people see him as the little Charlo because he's in a weight division lower and living in the shadow of his, of his brother. But um, I think achievement-wise, it should be the other way around, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Miles better achieved than a lot more. Yeah, he's achieved way more. So that's mm. a good fight. Did you watch Tank's fight? Yeah, I did. 
I enjoyed that fight. It was, it was good, eh? It was it was really good, man. I've loved uh, his last two fights have been really good to watch entertainment value but I'd, I'd love to see him fight like um pro gray or taylor haney Tio, loma i'd love to see him when he takes that step up to fight that next level of guys you know just to see how he goes yeah unfortunately it sounds like he'll never fight josh taylor he'll never fight tfimo lopez and he'll never fight lomachenko his promoters don't want him to, eh? <laughs> they don't, eh? They want to keep it in-house and just, yeah. just They're basically, he's a marketer. They're using him as like a marketing gimmick. Yeah. Who was that just other one you mentioned in that group just before? Pro Grey. Pro Grey. Now, that would work. That would work. That'd be a, yeah, that'd be a great fight, man. Pro Grey did really well. I had Taylor beating Pro Grey 115-113. Um, but it was a really hard-fought scrap. And there were some swing rounds in there. So it was really tough. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see Pro Gray fight him. He's a very entertaining fighter, Tank. You know, he's he's great to watch. Yeah, I, oh, just I had that. um going into the eleventh round, I had that fight ninety four ninety four. Wow, I, I had it even. Yeah, I, I thought probably, I thought yeah. Barrio thought Barrio was out um was racking up rounds against him one after the other, really out pointing it. But th but then he got that. He knocked him down twice in one round, and then he started taking over as the fight went on, Tank, and, you know, he was just slowly breaking him down. You know what, the other day, Floyd coming over in the corner just before the 10th round started. He says, Told him, eh? Hey. Yeah, told him, you're down on the unofficial scorecards, and I think he knew he, was, he might have been close, but uh, I think they was just trying to give him incentive to push him to go for the knockout, and that way there's no, no way the judges could interfere. Um, yeah, yeah, and he hammered him, eh, boy, he come out and busted him up, man. He did. Yeah. He timed his, timed his run pretty well, I think. Um, yeah. I, mean, I really do like, a lot of people are saying, um, oh, you hate Tank. If you say, I want Tank to fight that next level of competition, they say, oh, are you just hating on Tank? It's like, I don't hate Tank. I've loved his last two fights. They've been so entertaining to watch, but I yeah. just want to see him fight those other guys. That's it. That's where the hate comes from, is because he won't fight these the truth, you know, these elite truth, the truth level yeah. guys, which yeah, sucks. And his promoter turning around and saying, what do you say? No, he won't fight Josh Taylor because he doesn't have enough to bring to the table. It's like, he's just got all four belts. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding? Yeah. He's just got all four belts. He's just undisputed, man, but he doesn't bring anything. It's, it's yeah. farcical, eh? It's crazy. He's, but yeah. the, out of those, those fights, I would like to see him fight Loma the best. I think that's... Because they're both very similar size, whereas the other guys are quite a bit bigger than Tank. Yeah, um, yeah. I, you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't think Loma hits as hard as Tank, to be honest, but he's got a shitload more skill and... He's uh, tough, you know. he's durable, yeah. Yeah. I watched Loma the other day fight Nakatane. I watched it yesterday, actually. Someone uploaded it to YouTube. I checked it out, and Loma, Loma looked slick, man. He looked fast and he looked skillful. He did. I, I was I was impressed with him the way he he took Nakatane apart. I think Nakatane, God, he looks like a guy who should retire. He takes a bit too much for my liking. Yeah. Um, he takes too many punches. But I thought Loma picked him apart. He was he was just really clean. He was skillful, very slick, but he was um, clinical too. Yeah. Very clinical. He just he just took him apart, ground him down over the rounds. So, I would actually love to see a rematch with Loma and Tio. Yeah. It's very interesting. It's an interesting fight because Loma knows, like, I gave um, Tio the first seven rounds and possibly even the eighth round. It was a very close round. And then I gave Loma uh, 9, 10, 11, and Tio 12. So I gave Loma three, four rounds at the most. But Loma knows in the rematch he's going to have to start faster. Can't do or make the same mistake. But if, like, if he starts faster, it could offer him reward could also open up risk but he has no choice he's got no choice he has to start quicker so the rematch would be really exciting agreed agreed um going back to that nakatani fight with Loma, i thought that looked like really easy work and people look at that and think oh wow he did that to nakatani and look what trouble nakatani gave tio um you know pushing that triangle and i i don't think yeah. that works you know um Nakatani against Loma, I think it was such easy work because Loma's so much quicker and he's got the footwork, whereas um, Tio isn't as quick as Loma, but um, he hits harder and that's where 
you know, Loma had to respect that power, whereas Nakatani has a right hand, he has no left hook, doesn't have much of a jab, doesn't throw much to the body, whereas Tio does all of that, you know, so styles make fights, I think Tio's style against Nakatani made it a bit harder for himself, but I think he also respected Nakatani after getting caught a couple of times earlier in the rounds, whereas, yeah, you know, Loma could just dance circles around um, Nakatani and it it's easy work but certainly the rematch between Tio and Loma it could happen apparently uh, once Tio's fought Cambosis assuming he wins he's open to a rematch with Loma but it has to be that next fight because Tio's going to be moving up to 140 um, oh, okay he is going to move up yeah yeah, yeah. so but I, I thought I thought also with Nakatane when Tio fought him Nakatane was fresher oh definitely Definitely. Yeah, fresher fighter, whereas I think by the time Loma got to Nakatana, he's, he's had his eye socket fractured twice or something. He's taken a lot of punches. Yeah. I still I still I still liked um Loma's performance though. I thought he looked quick and very and very skillful and, and very un, and very um he was unrelenting, you know. He just he just ground Nakatane down. So I was impressed with it and Yeah, so hope, hopefully they do fight. Definitely. Definitely. Um Still interested in the Cambosis fight to a degree as well. I mean, yeah, Cambosis yeah. has earned, earned a shot, so let's get that one out of the way. Hopefully, um, well, one of the, was it Tio had COVID? That's yeah, they was, say he it. had COVID. Yeah, some people are saying it's not true and all that. I don't know. I'll take his word for it. I'll just go with it. Yeah, there's no yeah. point in arguing about it because we can't no. prove it. <laughs> no, no, man. So, so um, that's what it is. But like, um, what? Michael Zarafa yeah. was scared of the COVID. That's why he doesn't want to fight Tim Shu. <laughs> I think yeah, that's man. more more likely to be. No, I don't really want that fight. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, I want to ask you something. Um, at Crawford in the WBO, um, Virgil Ortiz, the young fighter Virgil Ortiz, he's ranked number one now with the WBO. Could he force a mandatory with um, Bud? How do the rules work? Um. Well, when did Bud last fight as mandatory would be the question. Um, is they, the WBO will order it if there's not a unification somewhere between 12 and 18 months after his last mandatory. Um, yeah, he, he can force it. He can ask the WBO to order it if he wants, if the time's getting close. So, you know, it doesn't seem, oh, like, yep, yep. Doesn't seem like Bud's busy. If I was... Um, no. Ortiz, I'd be pushing for it, but at the same apparently, time, does Ortiz think he's quite ready for it yet? Well, he's <laughs> fighting Green Machine. Remember Green Machine, who Bud fought? Well, apparently, Ortiz is fighting him next. Yeah, he's going to fight Green Machine, which is a good test for Ortiz. Not Danny um, Green, no. Oh, no, no, they, they called him Green Machine. He had a funny mm. name. Hang on, I'll, I'll um, okay. boxing wreck and I'll bring it up. No. Apparently, he's fighting. he's fighting him. And after that, I was wondering if he'll go, if he'll try and get a fight with Bud. Because Bud's 34 in September. God, he's got to get going. Yeah. yeah. I like Bud Crawford. It's frustrating. Okay, I'll find the guy's name here. Um, think it's, yeah, that cover, Leah, it's an absolutely weird name, man. <laughs> yeah, they just call him Green Machine to keep it simple. He fought him before Cal Brook. Or is it? Just looking it up. See if I can butcher it. <laughs> it's a real hard one. Carver, the uh, Uskas or some. Oh, it's a oh Kevales Kevalauskas. Uh, yep, that's him. Um. Well, he's fighting him apparently. He's, well, oh, it's not listed yet, but I've heard I've heard that he's fighting. Okay. Fight, gonna fight Ortiz next. Okay, yeah, well, it's a Mando, so that'll be good. I wonder, Ortiz, is he a PBC fighter? Not sure? Uh, I, I'm not sure who he's with. Hmm. I just looked at the rankings the other day, and, and um, I saw he was ranked with number one with the, the WBO, and I just thought, wow, well, that'd be a nice fight for Crawford, because he called Crawford out, eh, after okay. his last fight. Yeah. Crawford, Crawford was in the crowd, and he called him out. And he's 17-0 and 0 with 17 stoppages. He's a bit yeah, of a beast, five, five. is Victor Ortiz. 
Virgil or Virgil. Oh, oh yeah, Virgil. sorry, Virgil or Tears. Yep. There he is. Um, yeah, he has. He, he beat. Um, yeah, he beat uh, Maurice Hooker. Yep. So yeah, he called. He called um, Crawford out, but I don't know if Crawford was that receptive. But as I say, I saw he was number one with the WBO, and I thought, well, you know, if he can push the issue with the WBO, yeah, yeah um, you know, force Terence to um, fight him, he would have no choice but to fight him. Yeah, well, he's only only got to uh, petition the WBO, and it'll be a yay or nay. So. Yep. Um, he's he's two inches taller than Crawford, but Crawford's got four inches in reach. He's got those exactly. knuckle dragon arms, doesn't Crawford? Eh? Yeah, man. Yeah, so it's it'll be a good fight, man, if it happens. Seventy inch reach for Ortiz, five ten. Orthodox. He's got Crawford's some power five. too, is that boy? Jesus, he's knocked uh, everyone out. Seventeen and zero with seventeen knockouts. Yep, man. If he can put the if he can um, push the issue the issue with uh, the WBO at some point be fucking yep. good man the fight itself is he gonna be able to get that power to uh Crawford's chin or body or wherever you know Crawford's pretty crafty power's useless if you can't land it <laughs> that's that yeah that's right man but uh, it'd be a fight it'd be a fight that should sell you know people say oh you know Craw Crawford doesn't Put bums on seats, but the the, the um, Latino community would certainly come out. Oh yeah, you know because it's um, it's Virgil Ortiz, and then you, you'd think the African American community would come out for Crawford. So yeah. I think it'd be a fight that would uh, it should sell some tickets. Damn right, should be a Vegas show. I I don't think Bob Aaron wants to put anything decent on if it's not in Vegas. So um, I don't think we're too far away from getting full crowds in there again. But we'll it's see. looking like it. Yeah, yeah, it's looking good, man. Yeah. What do you think of um, Usyk, um, AJ? I got I got AJ winning that on points, unanimous decision. <sighs> yeah, I'm picking AJ on points at this stage as well. Um, I'm interested to see when we get a bit closer some training videos of Usyk um, training in his new weight of around 230 pounds. How oh, how much yeah. how much speed is he going to lose? Um, I guess his punch resistance might be a little bit better, not that he gets hit much, but um, I think those body shots are going to be what he's going to have to worry about in the first half of the fight from Joshua. He's going to want to slow him down, so a bit of extra padding around the middle there probably won't do too bad as long as he doesn't lose too much speed from it. Um, yeah, like I'm picking, I, do, I, I look at Usyk and he, he comes across, he's a tough guy. He's a very tough sort of guy, I think. I'd be surprised if AJ's able to beat him down. I think AJ's obviously, he, he's he's a bigger fighter, height, reach, got a great jab. He can throw good combinations. He's faster, AJ, than what people think is hand speed. You know, I, I think um, AJ will be able to dominate him and, and get a points decision, but I, I, I actually, I'd be surprised if he stops Usyk. I think Usyk's pretty tough, you know. Yeah, well, watch the space, though, when it comes to weigh-in time. I imagine we're going to see AJ around the 240 flat pounds if not just in the 238 or something like that i, I think so eh? yeah he's gonna well, try no, and he'll... match some of that speed yeah and um because that's realistically the only chance um usik has got of winning is beating him with speed and technique um you know everybody says he's just a blown up cruiserweight and blah 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 um he's got hasn't got enough power at heavyweight but you know look at him at cruiserweight he wasn't a hugely powerful cruiserweight either. <laughs> he wasn't the guy who hit you with one punch and hurt you and stop you. you, know? um, you don't accumulate. always need power. Yeah, you don't always need power to win fights. The only thing is, trying to win a points decision against um, AJ in the UK, yeah, very hard. Yeah, well, that's if it's going to be in the UK. They might go to the UK. Saudi that's true. Or something. Like, yeah. I, I don't. Is yeah, it that's... actually confirmed yet? I don't. Still don't think it's confirmed. Oh, uh, hang on. I checked. I checked the other day. Yeah. Having a look, AJ. So what do we got here? Oh, yeah, twenty fifth of the September. And it should have but, a venue um, there. A scheduled bout, subject to change in commission approval. Uh, yeah. World Boxing Association title. La 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 la. Where's the venue? They can't put it up here with no freaking venue. What the hell? 
Okay, yeah, pending approval. No venue. I don't know, what if I click on event? It might come up. Let's see. Saturday 25th of September. In the United Kingdom is what it's got. It doesn't have the actual venue, but it has United Kingdom there, so. Yeah. Maybe a Wembley or a Cardiff or something. Um, it will yeah. be summertime, so they can have an outside fight. It'll be a good, eh? Yeah, it'll be like a good one. Um, interesting, I, I was actually watching a couple of videos yesterday of some boxes and whatnot uh, making predictions, but there is the odd guy thinking that Usyk's going to actually be able to outpoint Joshua. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't see it personally, but to their own. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, if Joshua comes in around 250, I think there's a possibility. Yeah. You know, Usyk yeah. could put the work on him early and try and gas him out and go for the go for the majority of rounds later on. But I can't see Joshua coming in that heavy and being slow enough. He's not that. Oh, I can't. Yeah, he's not that stupid, eh, man? He he knows Usyk's going to try and manoeuvre and out points, so he'll 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 come in prepared for that. He yeah. won't be any heavier than two forty three. As I, mean, I say, he's got he's got the height, reach, jab. You know, he he'll just be able to physically dominate Usyk. I, I think. Yep. The only person who would come in with extra weight to try and steamroll Usyk is uh, Derek Chisora because he can't do anything else. Nobody else <laughs> yeah. is dumb enough to do that. And I'm not saying Derek Chisora is dumb. It's just he hasn't got any other any other weapons in his arsenal Aye. for somebody like Usyk. Um, yeah, he Joshua is what he is. What he is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. that's the thing with AJ. AJ showed against um, Andy Ruiz. He's versatile. He can change yeah. it up, you know. He can bring a lot of different fight plans. Indeed. Uh, I mean, he... Yeah, I, I, as I say, he'll fight from the outside. He'll come in, to, as you say, 238 to 243. With the jab from the outside. You know, and then just throw combinations. And it just make it really difficult for... I actually think the fight you saw with Parker and AJ, you'll see with Usyk and AJ. Pretty much. People Thinking seem to it, yeah. forget that Usyk is just about the same size as Parker. <laughs> same <laughs> height, reach, everything, man. Yeah. Weight. Yep. Yeah, weight isn't far off now either. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I think you'll see the same. I think the jab will be the defining, uh, the de defining weapon in the fight. It'll, it'll be in AJ's favour. Yeah. Um, provided he can stick it all night long, he has to be able to do it all night long because Usyk will. Keep trying to bob and weave and get under that jab. Hooks to the body, yeah. over the top with the left hand. You know, so. he'll sharp to win. He'll sharp to win the fight, no doubt, man. He'll he'll get in there, eh? Yep. Looking um, forward to. It. I know it's not the fight everybody wants to see, but I think we're going to get a much more entertaining fight than many are expecting. Um, oh, it's a, it's a good fight. It's a good yeah. fight. And the thing is, we can have this fight, get this fight done. Now, hopefully, I hope AJ wins, and then hopefully. Um, well, whoever wins out of Fury and Wilder, hopefully they will unify with that with um, AJ. So we're yeah. gonna we're gonna we're gonna win either way. Yeah. Right. Um, Phil Carl Roberts just mentioned in the chat. I forgot about that. It was they were talking about Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Yeah, that's right. I remember that now. My old fart brain had a fart for a minute. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it's gonna be. A, I think it's gonna be a more entertaining fight. Um, yeah, I have heard a lot of people say, oh, AJ's big, strong, too big, too strong. He's going to bulldoze him. It's going to be over in four rounds. Like, <laughs> yeah. nah. Do you really know boxing? <laughs> yeah. U U Usyk, Usyk's a champion caliber fighter. He, he's, a, he's an A-lister. Yeah, man. He, he's, he's, a, he's a top guy, man. He, he's not going to show up and just lay down. He, he's yeah. going to bring plenty. I don't think he'll have enough. That's just my personal opinion. But he'll, he'll definitely show up fit, ready to go, and he'll, he'll give everything he has. He's coming I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, yeah, I'm a, seeing a 12 one. round fight for sure me too um, and I think AJ damn well knows it too he'll be trading oh, hard he, for it oh yeah mate he knows better than to underestimate people look what happened when he fought Fatty the first time he knows better yeah, he learned the hard way <laughs> dead mate he dead what was the other fight I was thinking about another oh Pacquiao Spence is um, pretty much confirmed isn't it yeah, pretty much. Hopefully, yeah. it's gonna happen. Um, that, that's gonna be an, 
An yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, you know, Pacquiao keeps defying nature. He's a freak. He's, what, 42? And he keeps coming back and beating guys like Keith Thurman at 40 years old. And so. Yeah, man. I mean, if Spence, I think, I was looking at Spence, I think he's got about a five-inch reach advantage. If Spence's jab is really effective, I think he, he will, he'll, he'll just weather Pacquiao's storm early and then just pick him apart and probably win, win on points. Yep. I don't think he was going to stop Pac, to be honest. I think he went on points. But if um, if Pacquiao, if his jab's not effective and Pacquiao was able to close with him, I mean, I'll tell you what, mate, Spence will be in for a rough night. Yep. Those combinations. Yeah. You know, yeah. Pac can still throw five punches in the in the time Spence can throw two. So, you know. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's going to be, it could be a real tough night for Spence. Uh, you, you can't, you couldn't count um, Pac out. I think... The success or failure of Spencer's jab is going to have a huge uh, effect on how this fight goes. You know, yep. if, his, if his jab works, he'll just neutralize Pac and he'll pick him apart, win on points. If his jab doesn't work and Pac's able to close with him consistently, you could see Spence get, getting dusted up. Yeah. I'm picking um, Spence to win, though. I'm picking the jab to be effective. Yeah, I'm picking Spence to win as well. Oh, shit, it might even be a late stoppage. Oh, I'm keep thinking every time Pacquiao gets in the ring, is this fight going to be the one where he's aged overnight? If so, he's going to get stopped. Eh? Yeah, so, it happens, yeah. man. It really does happen. You see, guys, they fight really well for a long time, and then just all of a sudden, it, it just hits them, eh? Yeah. Toast. Yeah. But, um, yeah. no, I, I do wish Pacquiao all the best. Um, I'd like to see him beat Spence. But, yeah, I, I can't yeah. see it happening at this point. If it was Pacquiao no. from 10 years ago, oh, yeah, he'd have it all over Spence, I reckon. But I think so. 21st of the 8th, 21st of August. 21st of August. Yeah, we got some good, in Las Vegas. Damn, we got some good fights coming up this year, man. That should a be lot a of good, pretty yeah. stacked card, too, I imagine, once yeah. it gets made. A lot of good stuff happening. There was another, um, Daniel Dubois come back quite well from, from his eye surgery. He recovered quite quickly, eh? He did. Um, yeah. Mind you, it was a good seven or eight months, though, wasn't it? Still? Uh, uh, when don't was know. It? I lost track of time. <laughs> I think it was October last year he fought Joyce. October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. It was in May he fought Denu, wasn't it? So it's seven months. Checking this. I'm just checking it. Daniel Dubois. He fought, oh, he fought Joe Joyce on 28th of the 11th, 2020. On November. That's six months. Yeah, yeah. Now he's just fought Dino and he won in the second round. So yeah, he made a good comeback. You know, it's, good. it's always yeah. concerning when they get those eye injuries. You sort of wonder. Yeah. Um, well, interesting. Um, I was watching one of Squid's videos the other day, and he was talking about the WBA champions and what order they go. And apparently, um, the interim champion is lower than the gold champion. So, Got all these coal, these belts, yeah. man. Goes super champion, then regular champion, which is Trevor Bryan. Um, I see Manuel Char has disappeared as uh, champion in recess for the regular title. But um, then Robert Hellenius, then Daniel Dubois. So that suggests to me, I see a lot of AJ fans have been saying, Daniel Dubois is now um, the interim champion to Anthony Joshua's super title. So no, 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 no. If he's his interim title is ranked lower than the gold title, then he is interim champion to Trevor Bryan's belt, the fake one. <laughs> what a man. All, these, all these belts are a mess. I can't keep up with them, eh? Yeah. Oh, uh, also, also, if you look at um, when Trevor Bryan had the interim title, who he got off BJ Flores, um, he was... Man, he was uh, interim title holder and mandatory to Manuel Char. So, there's no super title mandatory at present for for those who were wondering. The WBA. But... Oh, yeah, yeah. You got... Uh, I've just found Jamel's fight, 17th of July. So, two weeks. Okay. Yep. We undisputed. Mean. Just looking at, looking at all the champions here. I wonder if jo what jo do you think Josh Taylor will stay at 140? Yeah, I think he'll stay there for a little bit. Um, unless, no, I think he will stay there. He wants to wait for Tio to come up. He wants to fight. Oh, okay, him. awesome. 
so that would be good. Um, in the meantime, he's still got to maintain four mandatories. <laughs> so, Wow, that's hard work, eh? It is hard work, yeah. and he may be waiting a little while if he wants to fight Tio as well, because tio has got this Cambosis fight, and then he looks like he wants the Loma rematch, so that's at least another 12 months. Joshua, I mean, right. yeah, Josh Taylor's going to have to maintain his status. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tough work. What right. did you What did you think of What did you think of Devin Haney fighting Linares? Pretty much a standard Devin Haney performance, wasn't it? Really? Yeah. I thought, and I, you know, um, people, um, some people were saying, "Oh, you're hating on Haney," and I said, to, I, "I was talking to people about it. And I said it's not hating on him. It's like he couldn't knock Gamboa down or out. The people were questioning his punching power. So now he's gone in against Linares. He's been stopped five times, and he couldn't move him." But he also got rocked by Linares. I can't remember what round it was, the ninth or tenth round. He was very lucky, Devin, the bell rung. Yeah, His legs take... looked shot. Oh, yeah. boy, he was wobbling, man. And, I mean, if there'd been another minute left in that round, it could have got really fucking interesting for him. Yeah, he didn't recover and... very well very quickly either. So it kind of no, makes you wonder so... about his chid. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, you're looking at that. You've got to ask yourself what would happen if Tank hit him. <laughs> or if Tio hit him, or something like that, you know, it's or um, any of these guys. It's yeah. um, I'm not like I'm not hating on Devin, but but you know, I think people got upset. People were questioning Devin, saying, "Well, you know, what's going to happen when he fights these top three guys?" Um, you know, I, and I think I think the people questioning it was fair. It was a fair um, fair question to ask. I mean, if Linares is getting you wobbling and and you can't move Linares when you hit him. You know, I, I got my doubts about Devin, you know. Yeah. He may prove me wrong. <laughs> He's a young guy. He, he might, you know, he might come on. But it was concerning what I saw in that fight. Devin did some good stuff, don't get me wrong. He won most of the rounds. He looked quick. He looked very slick. There's a lot of stuff to like. But it was concerning. And I'm not so fussed about the punching power because you don't need punching power to be a champion. No. And Pernell Whitaker didn't hit hard. He had a very good career. Yep. Um, it's just, it was just the fact that Linares rocked him. Yeah, you know, it had him on really shaky legs, and he was just very lucky the bell rung. So that that was concerning to see that. Yeah, well, I guess with Haney, you know, it is his game. Maybe he's known all along that he doesn't have the best of chins. That's why he's had to adopt the style of being so elusive. He's got to not get hit, or he's going to get knocked out. Um, and I think it's a matter of time when he comes across somebody who who has the speed. And skilled to be able to match him but still has some punching power he's going to be in some real trouble um but at the same time because he's quote a boring fighter unquote um you know runs around pot shotting avoiding shots um doesn't get a lot of knockouts unless they're lower level competition then he's not a opponent that people want to face because they're not going to get good money out of him um and he's really risky to try and beat. You might look really bad against Devin Haney and still yeah. win the fight, and your stock goes down. <laughs> yeah, he's one of he, he's one of those guys you just can't win. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you know, he'll make you if 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 you beat him, you don't look good, and if you lose, well, <laughs> you don't look good. So yeah, yeah, well, man. If you, if you beat him, you don't look good, and you don't get paid. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. So I don't know. He he needs. He needs to, uh, I don't know, <laughs> somehow get a fight against somebody to unify. Otherwise, you know, it, it's just yeah. the same old, we're banging our heads against the same old brick wall. He's in limbo at the moment. He just can't get anything. I'm just yeah. looking at Tiafimo. Re they've rescheduled Embosis as the 14th of August. Oh, yeah. He'll get that out. He'll get that out of the way. And then... Uh, Two days after yeah. mine and Tyson's birthday. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting just to see um, who, if he has that Loma fight. Yeah. Well, it came out of um, um, Lopez Sr.'s mouth that Tio's, Tio's open to the Loma rematch, but it has to be after the Cambosis fight so he can move up. That's all we got so far. But I guess. Oh, excellent. We can't be can't be pushing too much until that Cambosis fight is out of the way. Yeah, but, um, yeah. I'm pretty sure Lom is desperate for that rematch after his performance over Nakatani. 
And he, I think he picked that opponent purposefully to show the rest of the world that, look, I could do this to Nakatani when uh, Lopez couldn't. Yeah, even though the triangle theories don't work, but the public don't see it like that. It's just how, yeah. yeah. But, I'll tell uh, you what would be an interesting. Yeah, where you interesting. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez against Tank. But there's only one inch reach. There's only a one inch reach between them. Tio's 68 and a half, and Tank's about 67 and a half. Tio's three inches taller, but the actual reach, there's there's not a lot there. No, so they'd be right in. They'd be right in there with each other, man. That would be a very very interesting fight. I'd love to see it. And once again, that's where the the hate Tank comes from, because he won't fight these guys, or his promoters yeah. won't let him. But uh, I hope we get to see it one day. Oh, that'd be uh, great, right. uh, Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff to be, there's a lot of good fights to be made in boxing. I, mean, I laugh when people say there's no talent out there these days. It's like, there's not that there's no talent, man. It's just getting the talent in the ring. Yeah. Oh, you see um, Justice Hooney injured, not going to the Olympics. So why oh. not just stay pro um, and fight Dempsey McKean? Because he's had to, he's having to have some surgery on his uh, one of his hands, I think. It was hurt. They knew it was hurt, and they still booked this fight with. Um, oh, who did he fight last? Just one he just fought somebody. Anyway, he had a had that fight recently, um, and his team knew that he was injured. It was probably going to hurt him even more, so he wouldn't make it to the Olympics. I mean. Promoters weren't worrying about the well-being of his of their fighter. They were worried about getting that paycheck, punks, and that's wrecked his Olympic dream. Oh yeah, mate. Wow. So that's terrible. Two times the simulation fight, Peter Milos beat Tony Yoko on points. That's Shit. interesting. That is yeah. interesting. I'll tell you an interesting fight. Carlos Takam um, against uh, Joyce. Uh, Takam's 40 now, eh? Joyce will probably destroy him with a jab. Uh, I think Takam's toast, to be honest. When I saw him in that fight against, was it Jerry Forrest? He looked awful. He looked awful. He looked slow as molasses. He was gassed out. I mean, Forrest gassed as well so it made Takam look like he wasn't quite as bad but from about round four onwards he was toast if he's gasses like that against Joyce the instant Joyce sees it he's going to be coming forward bang 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 battering around and you're out of there <laughs> yeah he's going to do it mate he's yeah. going to do it mate yeah when I heard when I heard the fight announced I see a few people saying oh this Joe Joyce should get a few rounds out of this while the old dog's like <laughs> That wily old dog's been beaten to a pulp too many times, <laughs> and he's slowing down drastically. So I don't like that fight anymore. I mean, it's a no, good it's name. too late. Yeah, yeah it's, it's too late. Eh? It's a good name for Joyce to have on his record, but that's all it is. It's just a name these days. So yeah. um, good luck to them both. But why didn't Joyce try and fight Yoka? That would have been the shizzle, my nizzle. <laughs> yeah, it would have been good, man. Yeah. Good. I'd love to see Joyce against um, Joseph, uh, Joseph Parker. Uh, Joe Joyce sort of reminds me of uh, Holyfield Foreman. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it yeah, would, yeah. That sort of style. Yeah. That's Just pretty much what it would be. I can't think yeah. of any other way it would go. Haven't heard <coughs> of... Um, Mark has gone quiet at the moment. I haven't heard much. Since no. a fight. They were talking, yeah, we'll get it made to run it back, but haven't heard a peep, man. Just going to see if anything comes up. I'm going to type Joseph Parker in Google and hit news. There's nothing on boxing, Rick, for Joe. No. Nah. Um, news. What's the top story? Uh... Rejuvenated Joseph Parker claims best yet to come. <laughs> How many times have we heard that? I know. <laughs> I'm sick of listening to it. <laughs> I'm just sick of listening to that shit, man. Yeah. Come on, Joe. 
same exactly. old shit, rinse and repeat. Uh, yep. Two months after his blah, 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 fight was. Uh, where's the date for this article? Oh, it's one yeah. day. Yeah. Okay. Joseph Parker. Um, Joseph Parker against Charles Martin. That would be a good one. Yeah, that is a good fight. Um, I see Martin's trying to get a fight against Dillian White, and Dillian is doing the usual, uh, making. Well, not necessarily making up, but he's saying everything possible to try and make the a possible uh, make the potential opponent look like it's not worth it. I don't know why he does that. He does it all the time. <laughs> why should I fight him? He's nothing. He's you know Charles Martin's a bum. Even if I beat him, they're gonna say, "Well, AJ, you've already smashed him over for you and broke him." So he's yeah, he should. He, needs to get in the ring and stay busy and keep pushing his claim oh, i mean is white worried about losing his interim title again <laughs> i would be <laughs> yeah yeah because he if delian think he'll get the winner of fury aj like he's pretty well placed to get that um because well, he got a man he's, he is mandatory for the wbc so um, but that didn't mean anything before, eh? He was fucking... He couldn't get that fight with Wilder. No. Shit, you know? Yeah, I think if we get an undisputed champion, they're going to want to run it back. So there'll be a bit of time. There might even be three fights between um, whoever's going to fight for it, if it happens. But um, I don't see Dillian getting a shot next year, even. I see him getting... Oh, he's going to get a shot at the end of 2022, I think. Somewhere there. Um, we'll see what happens though, but in the meantime, I would like to see Dillian busy in fights like, um, Charles Martin. They're talking about Jermaine Franklin is in the running as well. If you had Jermaine Franklin and Charles Martin to choose from in front of me, I would be going Charles Martin because at least he's a name. He's a former world champion. He may have yeah, been, definitely. You know, he may have been beaten, knocked out by Joshua and, beaten on points by Kalnaki, but he's still got some good wins as well since that knockout. Um, yeah, I'd go for Charles as well. What's Jermaine Franklin done? Almost lost to Rydell Booker. Um, in my opinion, he lost to... Was it Jerry Forrest? It was, uh, might not have been someone like that. can't remember who it was. It was someone like Jerry Forrest or Jonathan Rice or someone. But, um, yeah... I, I think Jermaine Franklin's a goddamn fraud and he and White is sitting there telling everybody that Charles Martin's a bum and a fraud <laughs> and then talking yeah, up I, I talking mean, up the Charles weaker Martin. fighter. <laughs> yeah, and you look at Charles Martin, he's six five, he got an eighty inch reach. South you know, he's, he's got yeah, he's got big fight experience, so uh, Dillian uh, <laughs> shouldn't be writing him off you know, writing him off that much. No. Not at Just all. Just looking at Jermaine Franklin, 20, 20 and 0, 13 stoppages, 6 2, 77 inch reach. He's more, he's more um, Dillian's size. Yeah. No, I think it'll be a good fight. He comes to fight. I mean, that one time against Joshua, yeah, he was like a possum in headlights, wasn't he? Um, yeah. But he's gotten over that. Like I say, he's had a couple of good wins since then. And um, let's get it. Um, just picking another fight to put on the Xbox here. Set who shall we watch? Shall we do the Wild of Fury? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Cabriel, Andrew Ruiz. It's going to be interesting to see what um, what Wilder and Fury come in. The weight. The Fury was talking 300 pounds or something. Jesus. So was Wilder. Oh, Wilder was as well. <laughs> Wilder's talking. He's going to be 300 pounds. I've seen him doing some bench presses, benching a uh, 310 pounds or something the other day, and he's saying, oh, I'm going to be 300 pounds. You better get your weight up, boy. It's like, what? <laughs> your yeah, chicken legs yeah. couldn't support 300 pounds, boy. <laughs> no, and I mean, he um, the last time he came in at 230, it, he, it, it didn't help him. No. No, he'd he be better like coming in at 220. Yeah, he'd be better coming in at 220 or something. Yeah. Wouldn't come in any heavier than 220 if I was Deontay. Yeah. But I think Deontay knows, has to know that Fury outmuscled him. Yeah. 
Big he time. really. But the thing is, Fury will always outmuscle him. He's just a bigger man. That's right. So Wilder, Wilder has to come in with some ability. He needs some some ability to manoeuvre. If there was one punch I would be working on, if I was Deontay, that would have been the uppercut. Yep. So that when when Fury gets in close on him, he's actually got a weapon that he can actually use against him. Yep. Because I mean, Wilder's used to fighting long from the outside, but when these guys get in on him, he he he, he he's got no uppercut. Yep. He he used an uppercut against Luis Ortiz, I think, the first fight they had. Yeah, he and put apparently, him down with it. He, yeah, and and he's used the uppercut in other fights earlier in his career, but as of late, it's just not a punch he's been using, and he's got to try and utilize it against Fury just to give himself a tool that he can when, when Fury gets close to him, you know. Yeah, I think he all know, also needs to use a double or triple jab, mix it up a bit more often to maintain that distance instead of you know yep. letting Fury walk in so easily. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, definitely. Double up on that jab, triple it, and then throw that right hand, and then come back with a left hook. Because he's got a sweeping left hook, Deontay. He's got a decent cheek hook, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, man. He had been using it for a while, uh, like the first four or five fights after he became champion, and then it's like he got obsessed with his power, fell in love with his power again, and went away yeah, from it. So, yeah. Um, and I put a lot of the blame for that onto the people in his camp. Too much telling him he's awesome. Too much telling him he's yeah. like Ali. All this sort of crap. Yeah, man. Not telling him the truth. Just saying to him, "Look, you got a beautiful right hand, but you know, I, I need, I need you fucking, I need you throwing something else." Yeah. Like one thing they could be teaching him to do is, is leading with the left hook and then throwing the right. Other yeah. than throwing the right, then the left. He'd be jabbing a bit and then throw the left to lead and and then put the right down the pipe, you know. Yeah. Just just but, to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Or even the old um, Andre Ward combo, the one two one. You know, they don't expect yeah. that jab to come in behind the right hand. So. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see how he goes. Uh, hopefully, um, Malik Scott is getting him a lot more back to his boxing. Uh, fundamentals rather than yeah but I still... one thing he, one thing he's got to do is pick his hands up I was yeah. watching that I watched the fight um, again about a month ago and he, you know he's got he, he, he sort of sticks his hands out quite a way out in front of his chest and the, and his hands are down around his chest yeah he's got a funny stance and the thing was Fury's got an 85 inch reach and he's so fast he was coming over the top of Wilder's guard Yep. And cracking him over and over again, and Wilder never adjusted to it. Yep. And, and he just, cronk style. And the, how do you how do you nullify that cronk style? It's really hard to do, man. It's yeah, really I, I just I, I, I just like to see Deontay pick his hands up. Yeah, your hands closer to your to, to your chin and and up higher. Tighten just it up. To, just tighten it up a bit. Yeah, because when he had his arms out, you know, out quite far out from his chest and down round his chest. It, yeah, Fury just kept coming over the top on him and cracking him. It's, it's, you know, it was obvious in the video. So you would sort of think if they were watching the video, you, you, they'd see it, make some adjustments. But whether they do or not, it's another matter. Indeed. Yeah. One thing he can't have is Fury laying all over him. No. I mean, yeah, you got that 270 pound man laying on you on the inside. That white, that's going to wear you down, eh? Yeah. It'll um, wear him down a lot more, lot quicker than a 40 pound suit. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, man. Jesus. <laughs> There's been a lot of fucking nastiness going on. Um, oh, the, the, the to and fro, you know, people getting threatened and all sorts. Bloody just pathetic. Yeah. It's supposed to be boxing. It ain't days of our lives. Oh, he said this, so she said that. Who cares? Get yeah, in the man. ring and fight. <laughs> fight. <laughs> yeah. The, excuse, the excuses are, are just diabolical, really. Yeah. It's like the floppy gloves. I beat him with floppy gloves, and I said, "You guys realise that if if uh, Fury had floppy gloves, it means that he bitch slapped Wilder." <laughs> nice one. I, I don't think they actually stopped to think about that, but he bitch slapped him to a TKO. <laughs> <laughs> uh, BS knockout, bitch slap knockout. <laughs> Yeah, man. I love it. Oh, they're, they're, just not, they're just not stopping to think about what they're saying. <laughs> it's like, God, oh, man. Uh, yeah. Not to mention hope, that um, if the gloves were that soft and floppy, um, Fury's hands would be getting torn up inside the gloves from punching. <laughs> you know? Although, yeah. 
Oh, Crazy. man. And I mean, like, when they were saying, oh, gloves were all inspected and the wraps were inspected and Jay Diaz was there when they were, when they were inspected. So, Jay Diaz yeah. is still if, in the corner. It's yeah, farcical, it's, man. So it's I crazy, just, yeah. I hope, if there was something just, in the gloves, it was JD's goddamn fault. Why is he not fired? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah man. I just hope I hope this fight doesn't have any controversy. Hope no. we get a clean a clean victory, whichever way it goes, and then and then that's it. We've had our trilogy. Cool. And then whoever wins fights AJ. Yep. Be great. Oh yeah, I saw that. Um, Myra's Brutus has announced his move to heavyweight. And he's going to be fighting Kubrat Pulev. So that'll be interesting. I think um, as Morris Breeders has some skills, he's got chin. I mean, look how much of a fight he gave uh, Alexander Usyk in that WBSS uh, semi-final. That was uh, a good performance. And I think Pulev at around 40, he didn't look very good against Joshua last time trying to be aggressive. And I imagine he's going to probably try and do the same thing against Morris Breedis because he knows Breedis is a cruiserweight. I'll just go, I'm a heavyweight. I can come forward and knock you out. I think he'll get knocked out by Breedis if he does that. If he sticks to his normal game of pump that jab all night, I think he can beat Breedis with the height and reach. But um, good fight, man. What do you reckon, Mala? Yeah, yeah, Marius. I haven't watched a lot of um, Marius Breda's fights. Brett Pulev, how old is he now? 40? So he's a solid dude, though, eh? Solid dude? I'm not sure how old he is. I'll look it up, though. Um, but yeah, Latvian police officer. Yep. <laughs> Oops, P R A I D I S. Breda's. Morris Breedis Boxrick. 27 and 1. The only loss he's got is to Alexander Usyk. Uh, 6 foot 1. Spell his name. Um, he is. It's Myris. M A I R I S. Yeah, got is him here. Oh, yeah, yeah. 6 foot. No, he's 36. 6 1. 75 inch reach. 27 19. Only one loss. No yeah. stoppages. Wow. Yeah, and he's fought a Dorticus. Um, he's fought Usyk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 12. Shitty. He had a close, very close fight with Usyk. Wow. Yeah. Um, Perez. Dorticus' fight was a good one to watch, too. It was only majority decision. That's yep. available on the, um, the uh, sure. World Boxing Super Series channel. Oh, their oh, website. Yeah. You can go and rewatch their old fights there because that was the final of the second Cruiserweight um series he's getting older he's 36 yeah but um yeah he's, that's interesting he's beaten pretty much the who's who of everybody in the cruiserweight division besides murat gassy is the only one he never fought uh but gassy has moved up as well now yeah he's got a chance of it should pull his 40 six or four and a half 79 and a half inch reach that's a good fight man yeah <laughs> That's a good fight. It's not my official pick, but right now, I think I might pick Breedis on points. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, I, I, was, I was thinking that too. Um, yeah. And I did. Somebody's. Oh, Murat Gassiev's got a fight as well. Let's. I can't remember who it was. But I'll tell you in a sec. Murat Gassiev, there he is. Uh, Murat Gassiev is fighting Urkin Tepa. It's a decent fight on paper, but um, I think Tepa is toast now as well. He got uh, knocked out real bad against Robert Hellenius. Um, put him to sleep for about a month with one punch. So uh, that was in two, 2018, September of 2018. Since then, he's fought a few guys, um, but nobody of any real note. He's fought two other guys and got UD and a TKO. UD was only over four, so he's only been fighting 
eight and an eight and a four rounder since he got knocked out by Hellenius. But also, uh, we mustn't forget Urken Tepa popped dirty for steroids. Um, who did he? Which fight was that for? Is there no contest here? No, there isn't. I can't remember who he popped dirty against, and ever since then he's looked like crap. So Urken Tepa without performance enhancing drugs. I think is toast. I think Gassy is <laughs> going to knock him out in three rounds, to be honest. Yeah. But, uh, we'll see what happens. That fight is going to be on the 22nd of this month, so a couple of weeks away. Oh, yeah. Just in the chat, as he said, Pulev, I was thinking he retired. Is that... He retire after the AJ fight, Pulev? Or is he still, he still going? He hadn't retired, but I was one... That thought he's had his AJ payday, he's probably going to retire now. What what else is there left for him in his career? I mean, he's, he's his matchmakers have been so careful about him fighting who he needs to fight to get to where he wants to be. He hasn't really fought that many decent opponents as Pulev. I mean, Chisora was okay. Huey Fury was okay. Um, we saw him get creamed by... Uh, Klitschko in his first title attempt. Who else Boy, is he yeah. You know, Kevin Johnson. He's, you know, um, Huey Fury. Who's his best win? I reckon his best win would be Derek Chisora. <laughs> and that's not saying a lot for a for a world level fighter or supposed world level fighter. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, feed him, feed him to uh, Breeders, see how Breeders goes. I mean, it's still a competitive fight, I think. I think uh, I'd put the percentage of get, um, sorry, Breeders winning at about 60-40. So I think Pulev definitely has a good chance. But, I was uh, saying, yeah, I'd, I'd have it like 60-40 because he's a big man. He a big yeah, man. He, he's a very big guy. He, he may be able to dominate with the jab. And, That's it. Yeah, if he uses outside. that jab, he can win, but... One thing I'll say is I don't think he's got a shit show in hell of knocking out Breeders because he is a tough son of a bitch. <laughs> you see some of the yeah. shots he ate from um, the KO doctor who was Yanir Dorticus in that last World Super Series final. He ate some hell of shots from Dorticus who hits very hard and he still comes forward. <laughs> so I, I can't see well, really yeah. him. No. No, no, Pulev's only got half 50% knockout, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Due to mo most of the time, he, he does his uh, jab and grab. Or jab, jab, yeah. jab. So, it's all good. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing that fight. That's an interesting fight as well. I have to drop some uh, prediction videos closer to the time. All right, bro, is there any more fights you'd like to uh, bring up before we roll on out of here? Yeah, nah, that's pretty much every every fight I can think of, actually. I have, we haven't had a live chat for a while, so it's sort of... I haven't been getting feeds from your channel. I haven't been getting um, alerts. I hadn't been doing a lot. I've only been... Uh, oh, that's probably why. That's yeah, probably why. I've yeah. been pretty quiet. There hasn't been a lot going on for the heavyweights in the last little while, so... No, no, quiet. there hasn't been. Starting yeah. to step it up again, though. We're starting to get close to some decent fights, so I'll be a bit more active. And, um... Right. Hopefully your notifications have come through. And while we're on that, make sure y'all hit the like, hit the subscribe, and the bell notification icon for future content. <laughs> All right, man. So um, that's pretty much us for today. I uh, appreciate you dropping in, Marla or Stephen. Um, All good, man. Hope you're doing well. Hope everybody else in the chat is doing well. Thank you very much for dropping in. And a big ups to the Boxing Lounge, Tommy Tampa, for his $10 super chat. Big ups. If you haven't already, get over, check out Tommy Tampa's channel, The Boxing Lounge. And um, he's doing a lot of stuff with gaming at the moment. Um, also drops a lot of memes, so go check him out. Support the brother. Alright man, so uh, yeah, that's us for today. And uh, any Boy. final words? Stephen? No, nah, I'm all good, mate. I'm going to go and get some lunch. I'm <laughs> hungry, mate. All right, man.
take it easy, brother. And uh, okay, we'll catch mate. you up next time, man. Great, man. See you, mate. Catch ya. And that's us today. So I'm Jono. And we had Steven, a.k.a. Marla Ford, uh, 2243. And uh, yeah, we're out. See you. Well, team, that brings us to the end for today. Hope you've enjoyed. Make sure you hit that thumbs up if you have. And subscribe to the channel not to miss future content. Now, if you'd like to get more involved with the channel, uh, I do a lot of stuff over on Discord. At the Big Boys Boxing Discord server. You can join through the invite link that's in the description of all my videos. Or you can come to the main channel page and hit this Discord icon that's up here on the right hand top side of the channel it will take you to here yeah, this is the big boys boxing discord general boxing chat section as you can see we post news talk about boxing uh we also have some other avenues here we have live fight links um where i drop links to fights within 24 hours of them screening um we have the fight night gym up there as well that's just where we talk strategies and um, tips and things for fight night champion and we also have like replays i drop the odd replay there if you want to come back and watch fights but here is the live panel this is where the panel members on youtube on my lives come if you want to join in a panel you can come here click on it and you're in See the green rings around my avatar it means it's working down the bottom here as you mute you want to mute at any time no more green rings and over here is the hang up button this is noise suppression um but yeah the hang up button to get out of there boom and you're out also down here we have live fight streams got two channels there um we do stream live fights there you can come and watch them there i've also got the fight night gym um the gym members on Fight Night Champion, uh, quite often we come in here, use this as our voice. We can stream each other's displays here and watch each other as well. So it makes it uh, more interactive. And obviously, watch BB Games. Sometimes I'll put my Xbox up there if I'm playing a game besides Fight Night Champion, which there isn't many of. But anyways, um, like I say, that is it for today. Um, if you are thinking of signing up to the zone you should use my referral link which is also in the description if you do use it you will get a month free i'm impressed with the zone i've just signed up to it and there's a lot of archive fights there but the quality of their productions has gotten really good so get into it and uh i shall catch you next time i'm jonas from big boys boxing and i'm out see you Subscribe to Kiwi Box. That's the one. <laughs> yeah.